Good morning, or I guess it's still, I think it's, is it close to midday? I don't know. <laughs> I am coming to you from Japan. Oh, it was such a long journey, not because of the long flight, but it was, it was a, quite a journey um, to get here. Because I was supposed to be here three days ago, and I got here last night, so it was a two-day delay, but I'm here, so... Um, it was a little sunny year earlier, uh, so that's why I came to to film it. But um, it's, it's it got I think the sun got covered by clouds. So, but um, yeah, I'll tell you the story. But I I wanted to show this is my house. Well, I guess not really my house. The house I grew up. Uh, my parents live here now. It's so much green. It was ridiculous. Um, because I you know I live in Phoenix and it's everything in the desert and it's everything's covered in green here. It's so interesting. Like it's so good for my eyes. Um oh my god, that crop crow is so big. Um there's a little garden back there. And then there in that on that tree there was massive um black crawl. Oh, he just flew away. He just got the fruit. Oh, there's another one. Um, it was from that tree. But, uh, yeah, so I'm here. Uh, I guess I could share the story. I, oh, here comes a train. It's kind of busy. So, that's where the, tree, uh, the train goes. There's a train station right there, and then it's actually, uh, what do you call it? There's, there's no attendant. Uh, it's just a literally platform and you get on the, the train. I think there's like a little ticket in kiosk thing now but when I was little there was nothing and I actually took that train just for one station to go to school uh, every day for my elementary school and then middle school you know, or junior high or whatever you call it, it uh, I went to the other direction and then that's where I went to um, school but um yeah, so I guess I can move inside because it's kind of noisy outside. So I can I can tell you what happened before I got here. <laughs> yeah, so what happened? Uh, how I got to Japan was a journey. Uh, this is not my first time flying international. Um, if you know me, and obviously I've been to Japan multiple times from the U.S. and obviously vice, you know, other way around too and but uh i got to the airport or it was a, like just full of people it was like people were like over like it was overflow um if that's the right word to say but it's like there's just, just like people everywhere basically i booked a flight with japan airline um and you know because that was the main the longer flight um from la to tokyo and uh in order for me to get to LA, I had to go to LA, and that was American Airline because that's part of the you know whole like the same in the same group or whatever. And so I got to the airport. Uh, the line for American Airline domestic international was just like insane, and I was dropped off. Um, and you know how you can see like the, the airline names when you are being dropped off at the like departure. So I was dropped off right in front of American Airlines. Yeah, I got to the line that was, you know, straight. I walked into the airport and there was a line, got in, because I had like basically two big luggage and then one like carry on in my backpack. So it was just a lot of stuff, but I'm like dragging it, dragging it. The line was getting longer. They were like extending it. It was like going like this. 
and finally got to the front and putting my info and then like it stopped and like I need a further assistance so I looked around there was no staff um so I'm just like look still looking around who I can like call and then like get my you know get attention and finally somebody from the counter like saw me and like looking around for a while and then you know not getting assistance so she comes over and she was like oh uh, where, where are you going so i said my final destination is, is japan and she's like oh then you were international which i, I thought was kind of weird because it's like i'm only getting on american airline for domestic you know to go to la and they don't need to check really anything because normally well pre-pandemic uh i would get my passport checked like before getting um on the plane from LA like when I basically get on the Japan airline flight so I'm like okay well you know I already wasted like I don't know 30 minutes at that point and she helps me carry my luggage and to get in the um the line for the international flights so I go there and the line was already like it wasn't as long but I already noticed that it wasn't moving at all and she get she puts me up to the end of the line so I'm like uh I'm, I have only have like 30 minutes to board the flight she's like oh don't worry it's okay we'll just like find alternative route and we'll change your flight whatever and i'm like oh, okay and then i'm standing there and then like slowly slowly moving and it was ridiculous because it wasn't just me uh it was everybody it, um regardless if it was a domestic or the international line it was very frustrated because line wasn't moving uh, or no sign of like which line was the line you know uh you're supposed to be in um there's multiple people my the people who were right behind me also people a couple people be behind me they weren't sure where to go so like they had to split and then like ask somebody and then but you know to even ask somebody they were just like you know a bunch of people waiting to ask so it's just it was just a you know a mess anyway so then you know slowly moving and i'm like chatting with people in front of me they were going to barcelona awesome but like they uh they got the counter it was too late to check their bag i'm like and and also i saw a, a like family uh with uh they like the dad had a printout um flying from booking like confirmation and it had like a japan airline logo so i noticed that they're going to be on the same flight as me and they were a little bit ahead of me so and so they while i was still in line they go to a counter and they didn't take their luggage it was like young family two kids and a baby and they didn't take their luggage they didn't they didn't stay there long so i was like clearly i'm not getting on that flight and then there was something wrong with it and so anyway, I right away I started calling Japan Airline customer service. I waited for like an hour uh, yeah, before I get to talk to somebody. And anyway, so I you know call. I'm calling, still waiting. Not, finally, get to the counter and then talk to the agent. Hey, I was supposed to be on that flight, missed it. What can you know? What's what's what are we gonna do? And he was like, oh, so did you book a flight with Japan Airlines? Like, yes. And they're like, okay. And, you know, looking at something. And apparently, since because I booked a flight with Japan Airlines, they can't change my flight. I'm like, what the heck? And which is why I was still, you know, I was um, trying to connect with Japan Airlines. So I'm like, you know, like this, I had a, like one headphone in, I'm talking and uh the agent found like alternative route but he said he can't do it because i booked with japan airline but i'm like i missed a flight because you guys were short staffed like oh by the way while i was waiting in line people were like yelling at the, these like uh the people at the counter like hire more people you know everyone's going to delay you're this is like disaster yada yada yeah i just like you know i couldn't agree more but you know that wouldn't change anything so I just kind of waited there and like, well, okay, well, you know, everything's going to be okay. And got the counter and, you know, finally talked to somebody uh, on the phone. And they said that because flight was not delayed, too many people, uh, you know, in line to get checked back and then missed the flight wasn't a valid reason for them to change my flight. So I tell that to the agent and 
they were like, well, we can't do anything about it. And so even uh, the Asia calls uh, the, uh, what is it, One Word Alliance, which is the, you know, both company, both the airlines are part of, which is how I ended up flying with American Airlines. They even called, uh, he calls the uh, One World and they couldn't do anything about it either because of like the status, uh, you know, the ticket I bought and then the kind of ticket I bought. Um, and because I was like the basic economy, which is, you know, obviously lowest. And that was, you know, I knew that I was going to be coming here. There was, I wasn't going to change my mind. So that's what I bought. I was literally standing at the counter for like at least an hour. And then there was a pe like this couple behind me, they were going somewhere else and they were next to me the whole time. And they, I don't know what their situation was. So I was like blocking basically one counter. And, but then they were like, well, we can't do anything about it, sorry. And then literally this agent closed the counter because that whole section was closing. So I'm like in tear. Um, and you know i mean obviously i can't i just dragged my stuff to the side and still on the phone um uh with japan airline and they said that because like uh the flight original flight the time of the original flight has changed since i bought the ticket i am eligible to get a full refund which normally doesn't happen with the like the basic economy like i would only get like tax back um so that was a good thing although they said that it might take like two three billing cycles so which means like that would take three months to get the refund i'm like i don't and then i asked if i could get uh credit you know like as a travel credit so i can just apply it to you know whatever i'm gonna find but they're like no like I, we can only do refund i'm like okay and i'm like literally in tear on the phone and they were, were asked you know i think the whoever i was talking to felt bad so she you know she's like well you know this is the, the ticketing rule we can do anything but you i will give you like uh, american airline customer service number and i called it was just the japanese one and i called them and they were like well you know they kept saying because i bought with the japan airline you know they can't do anything about it but i'm like what the fuck <laughs> and so um yeah, I got to the airport like like a little before 8.30 or so. Um, and the the person who dropped me off, like, oh, I was texting her. It's like, oh, well, like, I'm going to miss a flight. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. But since I was on the phone with, like, two, you know, airlines, like, I couldn't call her. I was just kind of texting, but I couldn't text. It was just, like, a mess. And I text, uh, so I told her kind of brief, like, basically, I'm not flying today. Uh, can you like she was like i'm coming this way like i was she was coming towards the a airport again for some shopping so it's like i can pick you up and that was around two and uh also oh, in the while i was on the phone with american airline like i was you know japan airline was on hold and because i was on hold on american airline japan airline dropped the call because i at that point i was on the phone with them for like four hours or something so and then I got picked up. I'm calling Japan Airlines again. So still in the whole hold. And that was like I actually got longer. I think it was like an hour and a half, two hours for in order for me to talk to somebody. So I was in, in the in the car and you know, I kept saying it's like well like you know, clearly it wasn't just me that missed a flight and apparently there was like several people who missed a flight. There I don't know how many, you know, people are getting on the same flight to get on the Japan, you know, the flight to go to Tokyo, but that was, it wasn't just me. And there were several other people who missed it because of the same reason, but nobody wants to take a responsibility. Nobody would be willing to change the flight or give the alternative flight. Um, and luckily, I guess, you know, people either had the opportunity to change a flight um, because of the, you know, the, whatever the level of the ticket they have, however even that they have to pay the you know pay the difference for the like if they wanted to fly tomorrow they have to pay the difference which is probably like you know 500 800 whatever so it's like okay this is like bs but there was nothing i could do and basically so i have to find alternative route and it was kind of 
hard because not because the price the price wasn't so bad um it was like well i bought the original like both way totally i think 1500 and uh i was just looking at one way i'm like because i'm gonna be i'm going to be in japan for three months I was like i'll figure out the return just i need to just get there so i'm like googling googling and the cheapest one was like thousand so it wasn't like it wasn't ridiculously expensive but it was not reasonable in terms of like layovers like i had to either go to um uh, like dallas and it was like overnight you know layover like 10 plus hours or like go to canada and that was 10 plus uh layover you know like i don't have a friend in dallas or vancouver uh if it was like seattle i could you know like uh you know that wouldn't be so bad but they it wasn't i didn't have that option um oh yeah and then um the people um who i'm staying they were like why don't you look up something from la because there's more options um you know just get a rental car drive to la and get on the flight from la i'm like okay that's that, that that's actually a good good um good option or good choice and so i started looking up and apparently apparently this is actually the reason why i'm telling you this whole story i'm finally discovering this airline that i didn't know existed it is called a zip air it's uh it's actually budget um airline of japan airline they only fly a couple places in a asia like bangkok to like i think i don't know shanghai singapore maybe something like that but they they've started flying between narita to, uh, airport to la um since like november or december last year so just you know about like six months ago and their flight is like compared to like normal you know japan on my flight or even you know american or delta or any like major airlines it was ridiculously cheap it was like i think it was like 500 bucks for 480 or something like that but because you know if anybody has um anybody has a flown with like a budget airline you just pay the basics so anything you know if you have extra uh, if you any bag or any even carry on they will charge you but even that even putting putting a two luggage and then you know extra weight on the carry on uh it was still like 600 bucks or something like that and um i'll tell you the you know how the flight was but this is like now and also they are start flying every day um so as pandemic ends people want to you know travel to um, japan that's definitely a um, great option um it was you know not many people actually on that plane so on that flight uh so it was it turned out it was wasn't so bad for me but um anyway so i got that so i'm like okay how do i get to la i started looking at southwest oh that's right so i couldn't just like change it to fly tomorrow because uh japan still has um the the COVID test has to be taken within 72 hours of departure so i had to retake the, the COVID test if you ever watch this you know in the like I don't know however long later i was like oh my god you know i couldn't just change a flight and they fly tomorrow i got to figure out that part so then that was so saturday morning was supposed to, when i was supposed to fly out but i changed it to monday morning to fly out of la i couldn't find a flight that would get to la early enough on monday so i flew basically saturday night got to the LA like midnight and I waited for like yeah 10 10 plus hours um however because of the situation I was in I didn't feel like that was that long uh I took a nap a little bit there was a bunch of people at the airport so I didn't feel scared but it, it went by really fast it was ridiculous but um but yeah so that's <laughs> that was pretty much the journey I tried to make it sure i was trying to tell my friends because <laughs> they uh, like monday like two of my friends uh who i told exactly when i'm gonna be flying they asked me it's like hey you know like uh, did you get to japan because they asked me to text them when i get here 
and I didn't so I could I just like yeah but even texting I'm like I'm not gonna tell the whole story um because that's that's gonna be too long so basically I told him I missed a flight uh, I had to rebook the everything and now I'm here so that's all it matters um I guess honestly when I couldn't fly on Saturday I feel like this is a sign that I shouldn't go to Japan so I'm like because you know whole whole COVID thing it was I booked this flight in January and then by at that time uh there was still a regulation where I would have to like once I get to Japan, I would have to stay in a, um, designated hotels near airport for like at least like three nights, I think. And even last December was like you have to quarantine for like five nights or something like that. And that's, you know, you paying out of pocket and you're stuck in, at the air, um, inside a hotel room. So that I wasn't going to do that. But, you know, so after I booked that flight, I found uh, like a quick COVID test. Um, I had to pay so extra hundred fifty dollars but you know at that point I'm like I'm so desperate I need to go I want to go <laughs> when I and but I guess a good thing was I was getting a refund and I also um, I wasn't I wasn't on a strict timeline like I'm not flying you know for a week or two weeks so that was I guess I like, guess a blessing in disguise and I actually trying to film this while I was in LA because I had like, nine plus hours but my phone um, didn't have enough storage <laughs> uh, yeah now I'm filming it and that's the story <laughs> I'm finally here I will show you the other food <laughs> amazing food oh forgot to say um, I live in Phoenix and currently 112 degrees or something like that, which is 44 Celsius, like above 40. And right now here is, I think it was a 60 or mid 70 degrees uh, in Fahrenheit, which is, oh my God, I forgot um, the Celsius, but um, it is nice. It's kind, of, it's humid, but I don't feel like it because it's not hot, hot yet. And it's rainy season so it's pretty chilly and which is why i'm wearing actually long sleeve uh, yeah first day was first night was really cold uh we had an extra blanket and i was wearing like long pants and long sleeve which i did not have because i was expecting really hot weather uh, but anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video